20. Okay. Just wanted to make sure the uh, recorder is using the correct mic. All right. So last, okay. So what was the last topic that we talked about last Wednesday? Yes. Okay, very good. Okay, so that's why, you know, we are starting with binary comparison, you know, because you know, that's the next topic compared to where we left off last week. <clears throat> All of these concepts stack up on top of each other. So that means, you know, especially with five days in between the Wednesday class and the Monday class, it is it becomes even more important that you review the material, hopefully over the weekend, um, so that you know when you come back on Monday, everything starts to click and connect again. All right, so I am going to get started unless people have questions. All right, so let me change the zoom back here. All right, so this time you know I made some changes to my notes. Um, I use you know, some green rectangles to kind of emphasize things that are actually really important. So I have you know, you know, green rectangles you know, all over, well, I wouldn't say all over the place, but there are you know, like several places you know, where there are green rectangles. So the question is, what are you going to do with those green rectangles? I would recommend the same thing that I have been recommending a few times already. Copy these definitions you know, to your own notes, okay? And try to put all the definitions in one single page. So that means, you know, if you use a tool, you know, to create your own notes, it's good because, you know, that means you can move things around easily and try to fit all the definitions, you know, into one single page. On the other hand, if you, you know, just kind of put everything on a piece of paper by handwriting, that's fine too. You know, just use that one single piece of paper just for definitions and, you know, all the equations. Um, that becomes really important because, you know, I use a lot of symbols in my classes, not just this one, but also in 440, because that is the only way that things become clear and not ambiguous. So we'll start with this, you know, um, definition here. This is a definition of a, you know, funky name, you know, fun function name of du of x of m. And what is, what the function does is already explained in the text. So that means, you know, if you have read the notes ahead of time, then you at least know what BUXM is trying to do instead of trying to figure that out as I talk about it. Okay, so when people try to figure out things when I'm talking about it in a lecture, that is not the best way to absorb the information in this class. Reading ahead of time, understanding what I am going to talk about, at least the context, is actually very important. So VUXM, okay, it is not <coughs> the name of the next uh, Elon Musk offspring, okay, as much as we think, oh, that sounds like, you know, an Elon Musk, you know, you know, child, it is not. It is the unsigned value interpreted by, you know, using X, M bits of a bit pattern of X, okay, that's basically what it is. So the way it is calculated is on the other side. It is using the sigma notation, and i as an index variable is starting from zero, it ends at m minus one, and then the terms that we are actually adding are x of i, which is bit i of the pattern, digit i of the binary number x, times two to the power of i. So all of those terms have been introduced already. In fact, this very same sigma notation already has been introduced when we talked about um, phase conversion. Except in the case of phase conversion, we started off with infinity and then we ended up with infinity because we really do not know how many digits there are to a particular number. In theory, you, there's no limit as to how many digits you can have in a number. In this case, however, we use m as a parameter to basically specify how many of those digits do we pay attention to. So the bit pattern can be infinitely large. I don't care because I only want to look at digit zero all the way up to digit m minus one, okay? <clears throat> so this part is not really tricky because you know, we have been talking about this already. And then this other one, we have also seen it already as well, okay? So the way we have seen this one is when we talk about signed versus unsigned interpretation of a bit pattern. In fact, I, can, I think I even introduced the same name in the previous module. 
Okay. So if you recognize the names and you recognize the definition of those functions, excellent. Okay. On the other hand, if this looks new to you entirely, that means you might need to spend some more time reviewing the material. Okay. Because the knowledge part is important. Because without the knowledge part, there's no way of actually applying the knowledge because there's nothing to apply. The, the exam is all about application and problem solving. So getting the knowledge part down first is important. It's really the first step. Okay. So in the case of a signed, okay, the S here is a, it's a signed value interpreted by looking at the M bits of a bit pattern of X is pretty much the same thing except bit m minus 1, which is also known as the most significant bit, when we only pay attention to m bits. That bit, x of m minus 1, is not specifying an addition, it is specifying a subtraction from the rest, okay, from the summation of the rest. And it is multiplied to 2 to the power of m minus 1. So let me use, a, uh, use an example to illustrate it, and then we'll go ahead and continue with our discussion. So what I'm doing right now, this part, is really a review of the material that we have already talked about. There's nothing new in what, we are, what I'm talking about right now. <clears throat> okay, I'm using Joplin to do this, you know, because you know, everything can be you save in Joplin, so in case you guys are interested at the end of a lecture, I can always give you the markdown file that I'm capturing in class. So this is CISP 310, and I am in this particular section. So I'm in the right section. Let's add a new note. <clears throat> Let me get rid of these two. There we go. And I'll mark this as 2024-0916, which is today's date. All right. So we're going to look at a particular bit pattern, okay? So I want, I want to evaluate what is B of S, okay? Signed interpretation of the bit pattern of, let's try five bits this time, okay? Because we, are, we have only used, you know, like four bits at a time. So one, zero, one, 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 okay? In base two. And we want to look at all five bits, okay? So the question is, what does it evaluate to? So using the equation that we saw earlier, we kind of look, we, we know that we are adding the uh, the least significant four bits or and you know and their associated powers of two, but the most significant bit you know, is representing a quantity that we're subtracting uh, from the rest. So what we do now is to say, okay, so let's look at bit zero or digit zero. It is a one. So that means you know, we have one times, okay, p dot. <clears throat> 2 to the power of 0. And then we look at bit 1. Eh, it's also a 1. So we have C dot 2 to the power of 1. And then we look at bit 2. It is also a 1. So we have 1 times 2 to the power of 2. And then we look at bit 3. What is bit 3? Bit 3 is a... Is it a 1 or a 0? It's a 0. Very good. So, it's, so I'm going to write it to, I know you guys know zero times whatever is just zero, but I'm going to write it out here. And now we subtract the one times two to the power of four, because that is the one that we need to subtract. So you can see how the whole thing expands. The first four terms of the addition refers to the sigma notation, and then the one odd term that is being subtracted is exactly you know, what is you know, left out of the sigma in the definition. So now we just have to carry out this you know, particular calculation you know, using arithmetic. So we have 1 plus 2 plus 4, which is what? 7, minus 1 uh, times 2 to the power of 4, which is 16. So it would be what? 7 minus 16, and that is negative 9, I think. There we go. So that means the value represented by 10111 as a base 2 number using you know, just the entire 5 bit is negative 9. So this is just a review of things that we have already talked about. So I want to really emphasize that because, you know, um, yeah. So are we good with this? All right. <clears throat>
So now we switch. So now I switch back to the notes because all I was trying to do is to illustrate you know how to read uh, this portion. You know what read this particular definition. So now we look at you know how do we know whether a uh, whether the minuend is less than the structure hand in a binary subtraction. Okay, because because the, the whole purpose of this particular module is to ask the question: Is x less than y? In a subtraction, okay. We don't really care about the difference, okay. Well, we care enough that to only to the point so that we can determine the uh, which one whether x is less than y or not. So because this portion is you know, circled or in a rectangle, you know that is in green, that means it is important, okay. If you want to ignore the rest of this entire module, this is the portion that you should not be ignoring, okay. So it says right here, in a binary subtraction of two m bit patterns, x y, x minus y, t m equals to one if and only if v u x m is less than v u y m, assuming t zero equals to zero. Do we understand this entire sentence? What it is saying, what each term is referencing, and so on. So I'm gonna leave it up to you guys. I'll give you guys like about twenty seconds to see if there are any questions about interpreting this one single statement itself. All right, so I will ask a few questions then, okay? What is TM referencing? I mean, this entire module has no referencing <coughs> of something called TM, T with a subscript of M. And M is nothing new because M is, um, you know, already said here, this is an M, the subtraction of two M bit patterns, which means M is the width of the binary numbers, okay? So we know where M is coming from. But what about that lowercase t? What was the last time that we saw something that has a lowercase t as a symbol. That would be last Wednesday, because the, the entire row of t is, you know, basically the borrow bits, okay? And the way they are computed, how do we compute the borrow bits in the binary subtraction using only logical operators? That's another question, okay? This is me, you know, trying to make sure that we you guys here review the material from last time. So I'm gonna use the Joplin here. So I'm gonna give you, you know, how T was defined in the previous uh, lecture. All right, so T with a subscript of I plus one, which means you know, I goes from zero to M minus one, equals to um, the B of XI, YI, or, okay, so I'm gonna use the mathematical symbol or, B of Q of I, T of I. All right, that is the conclusion of our binary subtraction and addition module. Okay, but then the question is, what about you know B of something? Okay, so there are two definitions of the B function. One is based on the original arithmetic operations, which is you know when uh, in the case of X I Y I. When xi is less than yi, then we have a one, otherwise we have a zero. But we also found that there's another way to define the b function. So this whole thing boils down to, if I were to use logical operations, it boils down to something or something. And then the first something is gonna be the negation of x of i and y of i. And then the second part is gonna be the negation of q of i and um, t of i. So that's basically, you know, how we, you know, eventually define you know, what is t of i plus one in the terms of x i y i, q i, and t i. All right. So I'm gonna pause here and see if there are any questions. Okay. I don't see any questions. All right. So. Now the question now is, you know, uh, so we know we now know what is t of i plus one, okay? So if I want t of i plus one to represent t of m, 
i equals to m minus one. So that means you know, we just have to figure out you know, the entire t row in order to get to t of m. All right, so let's go ahead and do some you know, uh, examples here. I'm going to do some live examples. Um, so I'm going to use this mechanism so that you know, I don't have to line up columns and rows. It makes it easier to do that. <clears throat> okay, so um, we can try what three bit by three bit subtraction, four bit by four bit subtraction. You guys can tell me, okay, how many bits do you want me to use in terms of the width of the example? We have been using four, okay, so you guys should be fairly familiar with four bits because of the circle that we have been using in last on last Wednesday. So what do you want to use? We can use five, we can use six, you know, it doesn't matter. Let's use six. Okay. All right. So six. Uh, what is x? What what number do you want to use as the minimum? Ten. Ten. Okay. So ten would be one zero one. So that would be zero 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 one. Oh, I take it back. It's one zero one zero. One zero one zero in base two. So that's our x. And what do you want to subtract from x? It's going to be another six-bit number. Give me a, you can tell me what value. I can convert it into a binary. Hmm? Six. six, okay. So six would be one, one, zero, okay, because it's two plus four. So this will be zero, 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 one, one, zero, and this is our Y. So now we carry out the actual calculation. This entire row is going to be called Q, and then we have the entire row here, which is called T. And then we have the entire row as the result of the entire operation called D because that's the difference. Okay. So I hope this is not new to you because you know this is actually what we talked about last Wednesday. And there were a few exercises at the end of the module for binary addition and subtraction as well. So I hope you guys you know, try those out and you know, kind of exercise your um, knowledge uh, and skill in binary subtraction. So I'm going to I'm not going to say much about this row. I'm just going to give you the answer. So this would be 001100 because the entire Q row is a bitwise exclusive or between x and y. The other way to say that is every bit position of Q is the exclusive or of the digits from X and Y of the same position. Okay, so that's how I did the Q row. So T of zero is assumed zero, okay? So now we have to look at T of one. T of one is the negation of this zero and this zero here, or the negation of this zero and this zero here, based on what we just saw here. So it is just an application of you know, how T of I plus one is defined. The other way to look at this is to say, if I want to figure out what is t of 1, then i has to equal to 0. Then, then I'm just going to be substituting all the i's with zeros and evaluate this particular Boolean expression. <clears throat> I'm using only mathematical symbols here. This is you know, negation in you know, Boolean. This is conjunction in Boolean. This is also disjunction in Boolean. Those particular symbols were introduced in the very first class of this semester. Okay, so if all of that stuff is kind of new and you're not quite familiar, that means you know, it is time to review. Okay, I know I have been lagging. This has been, what, the fifth time I say this in 20 something minutes. Okay, but I cannot overemphasize the importance of doing that because you know, this class only gets harder if the things you know, in the, from the past is not connected. All right, so I'm gonna put a zero here. So now we are looking at this position which is one minus one, the borrow of that, which is a zero, or zero minus zero, or the borrow of that, you know, which is also zero. Zero or zero is, again, a zero. So now we look at this particular position here. It is z the borrow of zero minus one, which is a one, or the borrow of one minus zero, which is a zero. One or zero is a one. <clears throat> then we look at the position here. It is the borrow of one minus zero, which is a zero, or the borrow of one minus one, which is also a zero. Zero or zero is a zero. So now we look at this position here. 
it is the borrow of zero minus zero, which is zero, or the borrow of zero minus zero, which is also zero, which makes it also zero, and this is also zero. So now that we have Q and T, you know, the way we compute D is the exclusive or between the Q and the T. So we have zero, 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 one, zero, zero. So that is the final answer. So now we ask, does that make any sense, okay? Well, the way we look at this and ask, does it make any sense, is to look at this. This is 10 in base 10. This is six in base 10. 10 minus six is a four without a borrow. Yeah, that makes sense, okay? So everything seems to be consistent and they're all good, okay? But the whole claim that we are making, okay, none of this is new, okay? This is just a rehash of what we already talked about on last Wednesday. So what is new today is to look at one single bit, okay, which is this bit here, because m equals to six in this case, this is our t of six. It is digit six of the borrows. It is a zero. So I look at this zero and I can tell that x is not less than y because of the statement in the notes here. It says in a binary subtraction of two m, in this case m is six, six bit pattern x minus y, t six in this case equals to m if and only if the unsigned interpretation of x is less than the unsigned interpretation of y. The unsigned interpretation of, interpretation of x is 10. The unsigned interpretation of y is 4. And therefore, hey, it is not less than because your t of m is a 0 this time. So are we making the connections from what we talked about on last Wednesday to the new topic that we are talking about today, which is how can we determine whether x is less than y? at least in this case, for the unsigned interpretation. We good? Okay, so I'm gonna give you a different example, okay? So instead of six, I want to use negative six. So now the first thing is, how do we figure out the binary representation of negative six? So we'll go ahead and do that here. Once again, I'm actually doing a quick review for you guys. <clears throat> okay, the negation of six. Okay, let me use uh, notation here is the two's complement of the bit pattern representing six. So we are using six bits here, and that would be zero, 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 one, one, zero. That's you know, six in base two. Two's complement is defined as one's complement of the same bit pattern plus one. But one's complement is nothing more than just a bitwise knot, which means that all the zeros turns into ones and all the ones turn into zeros. So in this case, we end up with one, 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 zero, zero, one in base two, and then the whole thing plus one. And then when you look at one, 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 zero, zero, one plus one, it is one, 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 zero, one, zero in base two. All right. So with this particular um, example, I'm illustrating how arithmetic negation, which is what this minus is representing, is the same thing as performing two's complement to the, the value that you are trying to uh, uh, negate. And then two's complement is defined as one's complement plus one, but one's complement is just your a bitwise knot. We're flipping all the zeros into ones and all the ones into zeros. So we have this particular bit pattern plus one, and when once we perform once we perform the binary addition of this plus one, we end up with one 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 zero one zero in base two. So this is also from last week. Okay, you know I'm actually trying to help you guys review the material. Okay, but it is relevant for what we are talking about today. So I'm not you know no time is actually wasted in this case. So now I am going to carry out basically the same kind of calculation, except this time I'm using. Uh, negative six. So I'm going to be a little bit lazy, copy everything here, and only change the portion that I need to change. So let's see, there are three, six, seven rows that I need to copy, and then paste here. And now we have one, 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 zero, one, zero, which is representing, huh, okay, we'll, we'll talk about this, okay? And then we'll go ahead and try to figure out all of these bits, and then all of these bits here and also all of these bits here. Get rid of all the stuff that is not you know, relevant. There we go. So now this is our new example. So the next question is, what should I put here at the blinking cursor? In other words, what is 111010? 
you guys go like, negative six? No, it's not negative six because we're only concerned with the unsigned interpretation of the bit pattern, okay? Because that's our current context is how do we care, how can we tell whether x is less than y, but only using the unsigned interpretation. So the unsigned interpretation is the easy one because we have a two and then we have another four, one eight, one sixteen, then one what, 32, right? So 32 plus 16 is 48, 48 plus eight is 54, and then 54 plus two is 56. <coughs> So in this case, we have 56 here, so it's a, and now you know, let's go ahead and do the actual calculation. Once again, Q is the exclusive or between X and Y. Yes? 48 plus eight is 56. 48 plus eight is 56, so this is actually 58. Okay, thank you. All right, let me just do this. Calculation again, seven times eight is 56, yep, mm -hmm. okay, we're good. All right, so Q is the exclusive or between X and Y, so that means we have one, one, zero, 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 and then the T is the kind of difficult one to figure out because we actually have to work on one at a time. Zero minus zero has a borrow of zero. Zero minus zero also has a borrow of zero, so if we have a zero here, and then we have the same situation, another zero, another zero, and another zero, and now we have a one, and another one over here. I'm not telling you guys why we have those ones, and why do we have those zeros, because otherwise we won't have enough time to finish all the material for this semester. You can always ask chat GPT, by the way, you know, uh, ChatGPT01 actually is quite intelligent to figure out and explain all of these steps, okay? So if anyone is interested, I can do this offline, you know, after class, and then I can post the ChatGPT full explanation of this. All right, so now what about this row? Well, this is easy because D is the exclusive or between the Q and the T, so we got a zero, a one, and a bunch of zeros here. There we go, okay. So what is the answer here? The answer is we have 16 as the answer here. How do we know it's the 16? No one, no two, no four, no eight, one 16, and no 32. So it's a 16. So you look at this and ask, does it make sense? 10 minus 58 is a 16? Well, yes it is, okay, it is 16. But we owe, okay, we owe a, what is this? This is T of six. In other words, it is digit six, and we owe one of two to the power of six. Two to the power of six is what? Sixty-four, okay, it is sixty-four. So what is, um, in other words, I'm really asking what is uh, 16 minus 64? Is a negative number? Are we getting 50A back? Are we getting the correct value? Okay, 10 minus 58 is negative 48. So the question is if I subtract uh, 64 from 16, do I get negative 48? Yep, so everything checks out. But once again, all of that interpretation is irrelevant in our current context, because our current context is really just asking, if I just look at this one bit here, which is T of six, the most significant of all the borrow bits, uh, it is a one, which means you know, the, the conclusion should be uh, X is less than Y interpreted unsigned. Is that the case? Is 10 less than 58? It is? Okay, so it seems to work. But do we really care at that point? Hmm? We already got, do we even care at that point since we already got the interpretation for it? The whole point of this entire discussion is not about the result in terms of the difference. The whole point is the statement in green or in a green rectangle, which is if I only look at bit M, 
of the if the of the borrow bit after a binary subtraction, does that bit by itself tell us whether x is less than y? And the answer is well, so far it is consistent. Okay, in other words, we have not found a we haven't we haven't found an example to to disprove this particular claim. Okay, now if I were a student in on your side, okay. My natural tendency is to ask why, okay? How does this work, okay? Which is basically what the entire proof section is talking about. And I'm using you know, a technique called proof by induction. You do not need to understand this part. If you have already taken CISP 440, which is discrete structure, you should be able to follow the proof. You may not be able to come up with the proof, but you should be able to follow the proof itself. If you have not taken CISP 440, you can just kind of you know, make a bookmark to this one so that when you do take CISP 440, after they talk about proof by induction, you can come back to here and go like, okay, now can I understand the proof, okay? Which means basically this entire section, the proof of you know why this works, is not exactly in the scope of this class. I will not ask you any questions regarding the proof itself, but for those of you who are curious about why it works, this is the proof. So the next question that I would have, if I were you, is to ask, if this is not quote unquote important, why do I put it here? For one reason and one reason only. I, the professor, has to convince myself that this does work in all cases, okay? And that is the way I operate, okay? I need a concrete proof, I need something solid to let me know that, yep, this is not just working for a few cases, it does work in theory. All right, but that is also why, you know, I put a green rectangle over the portion that is really important from your perspective, okay, so that you know, oh, okay, if I don't have to read, if I don't need to read everything, which part do I actually have to read? The green portion, okay? So is that part okay? Connecting what the green portion or the portion inside the green rectangle is saying and we're connecting that to the examples, two examples that we have gone through so far. So we're good, all right. So the next four portion, okay, so I'm gonna skip, skip, skip all the way up to here. Unsigned less than, okay, and, and I use int here because when you use the word int by itself, in C++ programming, it means signed integers, okay? So now this is also has a whole lot of stuff going on here. You know, most of those are examples, but I'm gonna skip all the way because I know how you know, most people read. They want to skim until they find something that is actually of importance. So this is the portion that is of importance. What is it saying? So overflow is defined as O equals to the most significant bit of X um, this is negation of y, you know, and what looks like a multiplication is a conjunction, and what looks like an addition is a disjunction. So this is how we determine whether there's an overflow, and you know, then we can also determine whether, um, so this is the end result, okay? If I define L as the exclusive or between the sign bit of the difference, and O is the overflow bit, then L equals to one if and only if the signed value of x is less than the signed value of y, okay? So there's a lot of discussion here, and there are a few examples here, okay? I think it is important that you be able to follow you know, the argument in this particular case, but I'm gonna use some live examples to illustrate what I mean by that. So we'll go ahead and go to Joplin again. And then I'm going to reuse the first two examples first, and then I'll give you some additional examples. So now I'm going to reuse this portion, and I'm asking, what about, okay, I'm going to make it more clear. This is, oh, okay, I have to put it here. This is the unsigned interpretation, and now I'm looking at the actual signed interpretation. So what is the signed interpretation of the bit pattern um, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0? Same as the unsigned. Why is it, why are they the same? Because the most significant bit is a zero. So it doesn't matter whether we add or subtract the power of two corresponding to the most significant bit, which is bit five. 
because they're both, they're zeros in, in this case. Does that make sense? Does everybody understand what I just said? If the most significant bit of a bit pattern is a zero, then the signed versus the unsigned interpretation will give you the same answer. Because even though one is adding the power of two and one is subtracting the power of two corresponding to that bit position, but because the bit itself is a one, is a zero, excuse me, is a zero, so it doesn't matter whether you're adding or subtracting because adding a zero doesn't change anything. Subtracting a zero also does not change anything. So that means you know, this is going to be a 10, and this is also going to be a 6, and the end result here is still going to be a 4. But the actual end result is not even important because in this case, I'm asking this particular question. So now this time we have to be uh, expand on this example a little bit. The sine bit is known as the most significant bit of the difference. The most significant bit of significant bit of the difference is in this bit over here. This is at bit position what? Five. Five, because we count from zero. This is bit zero and this is bit five. Okay? So <clears throat> I will make it clear we're looking at D5 or D substitute 5, and that is a zero. What about the overflow? Okay, so we'll, we'll, work, on, we'll work on the overflow next, okay? We'll just put a question mark here. We are not going to bother with that. Um, so we'll, we'll just kind of stay like this. So according to the math, okay, so let's go ahead and work on the math part a little bit here. Um, right, okay. So let's look at this part here. Um, because in a unsigned interpretation or in an unsigned subtraction, the difference cannot represent a negative value. Because you know, when we look at something as unsigned, it applies to x, y, and also the difference. So in an unsigned subtraction, or you know, when we interpret bits as unsigned, then the difference is also an unsigned interpretation, which means it cannot be negative. On the other hand, when we look at signed subtraction, which means we look at x and y as something that can represent both positive and negative values, so can the difference, okay? So that means if x is less than y, x is less than y if and only if x minus y is less than zero. Does that make sense to you? Which branch of math did I use to infer that x is less than y if and only if x minus y is less than zero. I'll give you three choices here. I used calculus, I used algebra, or I used trigonometry. Which one did I use? Algebra. Algebra, that's right, okay, it is algebra because in any type of relational operator, if I perform the same operation to the two sides of the relational operator, then the truthfulness of the operator is preserved. That means, in this case, I can subtract y from both sides, and it will, if it was less than to begin with, it remains to be less than. If it wasn't less than before, it will remain as not less than you know, like before. So x minus y, yeah, it's just x minus y. y minus y is zero. zero. Yep. So that is how I can establish this particular if and only if. And it is going in both directions, which means if this is true, then this has to be true. But if this is true, that also has to be true. But wait, there's more. If this is false, then this also has to be false. If this is false, then this also has to be false. Huh? There's only one solution of this one. There's only one. Yeah. There's two options on by conditional, right? So either they're both true or either they're both false. Yes. Yep. And which side imp implies which side is can be flexible. It can be in either direction. All right. So because you know what is this, by the way? This is just D, okay? Because X minus Y is the difference, which we know as D in the subtraction, in the full subtraction. So that means, you know, a D equals to X minus Y and D of M minus one, or the most significant bit of D is a one, if and only if 
x interpreted sine is less than y interpreted sine. Okay, wait, hold on a second here. What is this saying? Why? Okay, let, let me let me put it into Joplin, and then we'll take a closer examination of the claim here. So I'm putting all the way here. The claim that I made is d subscript m minus one equals to one. If and only if um, x minus y is less than zero. That is actually what I'm claiming. Okay. So we'll, 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 I just try to digest this one a little bit. And for now, I'm going to switch back to Canvas. And I'm going to take row today. You know, I don't take row every day, but today is one of those days when I decide, yeah, let's, let's go ahead and take row. So today is 0916. I put it. I thought I set it up today. Am I in the right class? Yep. And oh, it is here, but I put it in the wrong year. That's why I couldn't find it. It's okay. The, the actual date is set up for today, even though it's labeled incorrectly. All right, so today's access code is overflow. So go ahead and sign into Canvas and you know, participate in this activity. And you have another, what, 15 minutes to do it. So if you need a little bit more time, that's always a little more time. So while you guys are working on this, I'm switching back to Joplin because we want to look at this one and go like, hmm. Why is that the case? Right. So I think most of you have taken row already. So we're going to focus on this little statement here, okay? Because yeah, we want to know where is that coming from, okay? We'll focus on this one, but this is only because of this, okay? Because um, x minus y is d. So what we are, what we what we really are talking about is v as d m, the signed value interpreted by the sign interpretation of d up to m bits is less than zero if and only if d of m minus one is a one. And why is that the case? So in order to get this, we have to go all the way back to the definition of vs. So we'll go back to the definition of vs in the notes first, and then we'll kind of double back into that portion. Okay, so here's vs. Okay, look at the definition of vs. So what I'm really saying is even if every bit is also is a one, the one thing that we are subtracting from the sum of all the rest is always going to turn it into negative. Okay, so okay, let's let's look at some examples. Okay, so we'll look at some examples in in Joplin. Okay, so we'll say let's look at a vs. Okay, vs of one 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 one. 1, 1, okay, this is a 6-bit number. So we're going to look at this. Okay, what what does it boil down to? So I'm, not, I'm going to go for a little faster way to write this now. We have 1, 1, we have 1, 2, we have 1, 4, we have 1, 8, we have 1, 16, we have 1, 32, and let's see, okay, wait, okay. We have to subtract the 32 from the whole thing. Because this one is corresponding to digit zero, this two is corresponding to digit one, digit two, digit three, digit four, but we have to remember for the most significant digit, we are subtracting that power of two. So we are subtracting 32 from the sum of one, two, four, eight, and 16. When you add up one, two, four, eight, and 16, what do you get? 
arithmetic. Your arithmetic. One plus two plus four plus eight plus sixteen is thirty-one. Thirty-one. I'm only ask, asking oh, about sorry. this portion. Okay, so we are not doing the subtraction of thirty-two yet. Okay, this entire portion add up to thirty-one. So when you subtract 32 from 31, you get negative 1, okay? So you go like, wow, okay, that's kind of profound because what makes this profound is you can make everything a 1 and eventually <coughs> the actual value being represented is going to be negative if the most significant bit is a 1. So if my interest is not about the actual value of the binary bit pattern, but rather just is it less than zero or not, okay? I can look at one single bit and tell you. I can look at the most significant bit and tell you if the most significant bit is a zero, it is a known negative value, but if the most significant bit is a one, then we're looking at a negative value. Is that quite okay? All right, excellent. So that kind of goes back to this here. This is just an example to illustrate this part here. If the signed value you know, of you know, D as a bit pattern up, interpreting up to M bits is less than zero, that can only happen if D subscript M minus one, which is the most significant bit, is a one, which means, oh, so if I look at the um, comparison of X minus, one, X minus Y versus zero, which means I'm just looking at whether X minus Y is negative or not, that can only be the case if and only if the most significant bit of D is a zero. If if the most significant bit is a one, then the signed value is negative. All right. Okay. So now we go back to the examples that we have seen so far. Okay, so in this particular example, okay, we have 10 minus 6, and we can see the difference has a sign bit of a 0, which means x minus y is not less than 0, which also means x is not less than y. Okay, so we can make that inference. So now we can say, oh, okay, so without looking, without any consideration of overflow, we can now say uh, x is less than y is not true, it's false, because you know, the sign bit is a zero. Because in this case, the sign bit alone will tell us you know, the ordering of the numbers. So now we look at the next example, okay, which is this one here. And now we also do the same thing, which is you're know, looking at the signed value versus the uh, unsigned first you know, and then the signed value. 10 is still 10 because the most significant bit is a zero, so that means the signed versus the unsigned interpretation are exactly the same. Ah, but the next one is a little different, right? Because when we look at the next one, which is 111010, uh, the most significant bit is a one, which means we know in the signed interpretation, it is negative. The only question is, okay, how negative is it? it is? Well, okay, if you look at the previous slide of how we came up with this bit pattern, it is negative six. Okay, so I'm not even gonna go through the math to figure out why it is negative six, but you can always you know, go through the same math that we used earlier, which is we're looking at a two plus no four, uh, two plus eight plus 16 minus 32. I believe that will also give you negative six. All right, so now we look at the result, okay? We look at the result here, and then we say, uh, what exactly is it? It is 16, it is still 16 here, okay? So you look at this, we don't even care about the entire result here. All we care is what is the sign of the difference. The sign of the difference is a zero, which means the difference is not less than zero, which means x is not less than y. So in this case, x is not less than y is actually correct when we look at it from the sign perspective because 10 is not less than negative six. So once again, right, looking at the sign of the difference is telling us the correct outcome. You know, everything works out. So I will also add that one line here, okay, just so that we can say the sign bit, which is D subscript of five in this case, 
is a zero, and we know that uh, 10 is less than negative six, is false. Okay, so far so good. So at this point, it would seem that, well, yeah, in, in terms of theory and in terms of the, what the examples we have seen so far, it does work out this way, okay? If the sine bit of the difference is a one, okay, I, let me rephrase that. The sine bit of the difference is a one if and only if x is less than y interpreted sine. So both of the examples and the math supports this conclusion. So just when we think it is done, I'm going to throw a wrench into this entire thing. Okay. So this time we'll talk about, okay, we're still using six bits, okay? So we'll go ahead and look at uh, uh, one, one, um, zero, one, 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 zero, one, okay, just to kind of add some, you know, variety to this whole thing, minus, uh, we'll put a one, 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 zero, 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 this is y, and then we'll go through the whole thing, okay, we'll go ahead and compute the q, and compute the t, and then we'll go ahead and compute the d, okay, there we go, all right. The, the Q is the exclusive or between the X and Y, so we have um, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1 here, and then T0 is assumed to be 0, and this time, you know, we have to go, to go through the actual calculation. That's a 0, 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 and that's a 1, and then we look at the exclusive or between the Q and the T, that becomes D. We have one zero zero uh, one zero one as a D. Okay, so we'll do the same thing as last time. We'll look at all you know, the uh, unsigned interpretation and also the signed interpretation. <clears throat> the unsigned interpretation is always the easy one because we just add up all the powers of two corresponding to the ones. So in this case, we have okay because we have fewer zero, we have fewer zeros and there are ones. I can also do the reverse, which is 63 minus whatever you know, powers of 2 correspond to this 0 and this 0 here. 63 minus uh, 32 minus 2, uh, I think it's a 29. Okay. We'll double check the 29 because we can also you know, do it in reverse. We can also say what is 1 plus 4 plus 8 plus 16? 1 plus 4 is a 5, 5 plus 8 is 13, 13 plus 16 is 29. So they all, so both ways it worked out the same way. Um, and then the next line is, uh, the next line is also interesting because there's also a shortcut way to do this calculation. Because I look at the 1, 1, 1 and I ask okay, what is 1, 1, 1 in, you know, as a value. 1, 1, 1 in base 2 is 7. But because we have three zeros here, so that means we are looking at seven times two to the power of whatever this digit is representing, which is eight. So seven times eight is a 56. Okay. <clears throat> we can also use the other method to add up all the uh, powers of two, except this time we are looking at eight plus 16 plus 32. Eight plus 16 is 24, 24 plus 32 is 56. So both ways will work out to the same value. Okay, what about the signed interpretation? This is going to be the same because the most significant bit is still a one. With this one here, okay, we are, you know, we can use the um, BS method, which is, this is an eight plus a 16, which is 24, 24 minus 32 is negative eight. So this is actually negative eight, all right. But remember the whole point here, okay? So the whole point here is I should be able to look at just the sine bit of, okay, let me come here. I should be able to look at the sine bit of the difference, and this bit is a one if and only if x is less than my interpreted sine, okay? So now we look at this and go like, aha, this is wrong, okay? It gave us the wrong conclusion because 29 is less than negative eight, 
is false, and yet the most significant bit of D is a one. It lied. It lied to us. What is happening here? So we'll try to figure out you know, what is happening here. So I'm going to make a the sine bit, which is D five, is a one, and yet twenty nine is less than negative eight. Is false. Okay, it's it's giving us the wrong conclusion. Okay, so we want to find out why it's giving us the wrong conclusion. And I have one more example to illustrate. You know the you know why sometimes it does not work. So let me count the number of lines to copy. So we have four plus two six plus. It doesn't show line numbers. You know that makes it a little harder to calculate. Um, okay, maybe this will work. Give me a okay, for the most part. I'm just copy and pasting what we had earlier. Okay, so Just have to line things up a little bit here. <clears throat> Let me give this one its own end. Okay. All right. So this time I'll, I'll change things around a little bit, and this time I'll go the opposite way. Okay. Uh, this is going to be one one zero 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 zero, and we will subtract from it zero um, one one. Yeah, that's that's fine. Okay. So now we have to recompute all of these values. So I'm going to replace all of these to be recomputed using question marks. Um, get rid of this, get rid of this. All right. So what is VU? Um, we can do the same trick as last time. Um, we can just add up you know, 32 and 16, which is 48. But yeah, so 48 is the VU or the unsigned interpretation. And this one is 24, and then we'll do the actual calculation. Okay, so we're looking at exclusive all here, one zero one zero zero zero, and that's a zero, that's a zero, that's a zero, that's a one, that's a one, and that's a zero again. And then we're looking at exclusive all again, so we have zero one one zero zero zero, and now we look at the difference in terms of um, the interpretation. 48. So once again, we have you know, one, one here, which is the 8, one, one here, which is the 16. 8 plus 16 is 24 again. Seems to make sense. 48 minus 24 is 24. Looks good. But now, when we look at the sign interpretation, we now have to say, okay, what is 16, which is this bit here, minus 32? Because in the sign interpretation, the power of two corresponding to the most significant bit is subtracted from the rest. Okay, so this is not too hard. Okay, because you know, 16 minus 32 is negative 16. So we go like, okay, this is negative 16, and the other one is still just a 24 because the most significant bit is a zero. And now we look at the most significant bit of the difference, which is this bit here. So what we claimed a little bit earlier is this bit, the one that is highlighted, is a one if and only if x is less than y interpreted sign. So it's not giving us the right result again. Okay, this is the second time you know, we have a problem because negative 16 is less than 24 is supposed to be true, but the most significant bit of d is telling us the opposite. Okay, so we want to investigate this and go like, why is it giving us the wrong result? But before we do that, I'm going to kind of change the conclusion here so that it is reflecting what we want it to say because negative 16 is 24 is actually true. So it's giving us the wrong indication. So the culprit of this problem has to do with the result is out of range. Okay. In other words, what is the actual result of negative 16 minus 24? No. 
negative 16 minus 24 uh, should be a minus pretty 40. minus 40. Negative 40, right? So it's negative 40. Can someone tell me what is the range of a 6-bit signed integer? This is also coming from, this is coming from last Monday, okay? So last Monday, we talked about signed versus unsigned interpretation. No, that was last Wednesday, I think. Signed versus unsigned was last Wednesday. And then binary subtraction and binary addition was last Monday. So what what is the range of a signed number? Okay, let's let's look it up. Okay, so let's see whether we can look that up. So we are scrolling up to uh, signed versus unsigned interpretation, which is on this module, and it. There's one place that specifies the range of values that can be represented. So even I cannot remember where I put my stuff here. There we go. Okay, generally speaking, given a W bit integer, the range of unsigned is from zero to two to the power of W, the whole thing minus one. The range of signed is negative two to the power of W minus one to 2 to the power of w minus 1, the whole thing as an exponent, minus 1. Okay, to apply that to what we are talking about here, that means you know, with 6 bits, the range of signed int is what? Yes? It's negative... Two to the power of not five. Oh, you're right. It is negative five. Okay, negative two to the power of five, which is negative. What is two to the power of five? Thirty-two. Okay. What is the most negative positive value? Is two to the power of five minus one, which is thirty-one. That's right. So with only six bits, okay, as the width of the integer, I can really only represent negative 32 all the way up to 31. But when we look at negative 16 minus 24, it is negative 40. Negative 40 is out of range. And that's what we call an overflow. Because of the overflow, the result or the sign of the difference is wrong. Is that okay? So now we look at the other example that we have here. Okay, so let me scroll to just that portion, which is this portion here. So when you look at this particular subtraction, uh, the signed, the unsigned result is not really that important, but we'll calculate it anyway. So the side, the unsigned result is one plus four plus thirty-two. One plus four is five. Five plus thirty-two is. 37, okay, but once again, that is actually not important to me. What I really want to know is, what is the actual result of 29 minus negative 8? It's 37, okay? So do you remember from the very last point that I made? Is 37 within the range of a 6-bit signed integer? No. Nope. Because we can only represent up to and including 31. So that is also the reason why the sign bit is telling us the wrong answer. Is that okay? So the conclusion, okay, you know, you know the mechanism's not, you know, with standing, with, you know, not paying attention to the actual details. The whole concept is if the difference if the actual value of the difference is out of range, then the sign of the actual calculated difference is going to be wrong. Is that okay? Okay, now I just said something that is not in the notes, but is of importance. What do you do? Yep, write it down in your own words, okay? You know, maybe not the way that I said it, but you still need to capture that part, okay? 
Okay, so the next question now is, but how can we tell that the difference is out of range? Okay, that's the next thing we need to figure out is how do we know it is out of range? Well, as it turns out, it's very easy to determine. You only have to look at the most significant bit of x, y, and the difference, and you can tell. In this case, we have a non-negative x, we have a negative y, and then we have a negative difference. That is telling us that we have an overflow, because the sign does not make sense. Is that OK? Let me say that one more time. We are subtracting a negative quantity from a non-negative quantity. The result, the result should always be non-negative. And yet the result, the difference, is negative. So that means we have an overflow. Okay, that's an indicator that we have an overflow. So now we try to draw a, make a table. Okay, so let me go back to this side. So we want to make a table and ask when is the result of a binary subtraction out of range in signed interpretation. Okay, so this is the question. And the following table is going to answer that question. So we look at three bits, okay? The first bit is x of m minus 1. You know, that is basically the sign bit of x, the most significant bit of x. And then now we have the most significant bit of y. And then we have the most significant bit of d, which is the difference. So now we have d of m minus 1. And then we ask the question, OK, um, do we have an overflow? Okay. In other words, is uh, the result out of range? I'm just going to say out of range for now. We'll change it to the proper term in just a little bit. Okay, so we have turned it into a table. So for the most part, uh, these three bits are can be considered as independent. Okay, so all eight cases. Okay, all but six. Okay, there are six cases that can happen, two cases that cannot happen. But we'll evaluate all eight possibilities. Okay, so that means we have zero, oops, zero, 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 and then we can ask a question here. Oops. Can we do? So we'll put a one here, two by y. We have one, we have one, and then we use four, oops, four by y, and then paste again. And this time we change all these two ones. Oops, so there we go. I'm gonna scroll this side up so you can see the entire table. So this is the entire table, okay? I'm basically saying, you know, of the most significant bit of x, the mean of n, the most significant bit of y, which is our subtract hand, and the most significant bit of d, which is our difference. These are the eight possibilities. So are we buying this? This is these are the, I'm spelled I have spelled out every single possible ways, you know, to arrange the most significant bits of x, y, and d. Because each one can only be a zero or one. This has to cover every single possible case. So then we ask. Okay, so we try to answer the questions now. Um, is this an indication that we have an overflow? But they're all zeros. Can it happen? That's all I'm asking. Can it happen? In other words, we are subtracting a non-negative quantity from a non-negative quantity, and the result is non-negative. Can you give me an example? Okay, using six bits, one minus zero is one, or zero minus zero is zero, right? So they all have the most significant being zero. Yeah, it can happen. Not a problem. So we'll say it is not out of range. A zero means it's not out of range. So then we ask the next question, okay, which is we are subtracting a non-negative quantity from a non-negative quantity, but ending up with a negative quantity. Can that happen? Yes. Zero minus one is negative one. It's not out of range, okay? So because it can happen. And now this time we are asking if we subtract a negative quantity from a non-negative quantity and we end up with something that is non-negative, can that happen? Not only can it happen, it should happen, right? So we go like, yep, totally makes sense. 
Now we ask, if this is what we see, do we have an out of range issue? We are subtracting a negative quantity from a non-negative quantity, ending up with a negative quantity. I think we have uh, we have a case that is supposed, that's not supposed to happen, and we end up with an out of range issue. Okay, so let me just pause here. Does everybody understand why this row ends up with a one here, which is indicating that we uh, uh, we have an out of range issue? We have two examples in today's lecture that illustrates exactly, well, one example to illustrate, to illustrate this case and then the other one to illustrate the other case, which is the next row. So the next row is asking, we subtract a non-negative -ne quantity from a negative quantity, but we end up with a non-negative difference. Does, can that happen in arithmetic? Okay, so it's really asking something like, if I subtract five from negative 16, somehow I end up with a non-negative value. It should not happen. So when we see this pattern, it means we have an over uh, out of range situation. That's a one. And then the other three are all zeros because they can all happen. Is that okay? So now, instead of saying out of range, I'm going to say, okay, this is a lot of typing. I'm just going to simplify this entire thing to uppercase O for overflow. Okay. So we know the table for overflow. We just have to come up with a way to actually compute it. So the question is, what kind of Boolean expression will give me an O overflow of one, but only for these two rows? So as it turns out, this means your O can be defined as the following, which is something that you just saw a little bit earlier, okay? It is the, okay, this time I'm gonna use the uh, mathematical notation, so it's all, it's gonna be at least you know, consistent, and then you know, we'll switch back to the other notation when we get back to the notes. So in order to get this one here, uh, these two are ones already, so the conjunction of these two ones is gonna be a one, but we also make that conjunction to extend to include this one here, but we want the overall conjunction to be a one. But this is a zero, so we have to negate it first. So now we have the negation of um, x subscript m minus one and y subscript m minus one and um, d subscript m minus one. There we go. All right, so we, we focus on this one conjunction and ask, does it make sense? Do we end up with this one on the fourth row of the truth table? The negation of x of m minus one will turn this zero into a one. It is ended with this one here because that is y of m minus one, and that will also be ended with this one here, which is d of m minus one. So we do end up with one and one and one, and no, no matter what we or that with, we always end up with the one. Is that okay? <clears throat> but that's not the only row that has a one. So now we ask, how do we end up with this particular one over here? Well, it's kind of the same deal. This is a one already, we leave it the way it is. This is a zero, we negate it. This is also a zero, we negate it. And then we make one conjunction of all of those terms. So that means when we are looking at this side of the or, or the right hand side of the or, we, then we basically take x of m minus one, as is, end it with y, uh, the negation of y subscript of m minus one, and then end that in return with uh, the negation of d subscript oops, of m minus one, and now we have that equation. So this is how we define O, okay, you know, the overflow flag. It is basically a or of two conjunctions and each, in each conjunction, you know, we, in this case, we have um, basically x of m minus one versus d, uh, y and d of m minus one. One side is negated and the other one is not. It's basically, you can see how this is negated, these two are not, this is not negated, these two are. And I think I forgot the subtraction of one. So let me add that subtraction of one. Oh, instead of subtraction, I can use a subscript. That's why it looked kind of funny. There we go. All right, so we only got 
one more minute to go. So now the question is, we have the sign bit, okay? The sign bit is nothing more than the most significant bit of D or the difference. So now we look at these two and we ask, how do we look at both of these bits, okay? O versus S and draw lines. And how do we combine these two to determine whether um, X is less than Y or not? So now we have another table. So we look at sine, we look at O, and then we look at, you know, V S, V subscript S, um, X M, X M being less than X S of Y M. Okay. And we have four cases because S can be zero or one. But O can also be zero or one. That is zero two. And then we just plug one over here. And I forgot one thing that I need to turn it into a table. There we go. All right, so on the right-hand side, we want to answer the question. Okay, there's no overflow situation on the first row. The sign bit of the difference is a zero, which means we can't trust it. So the conclusion is, is x less than y interpreted sign? What do you think? There's no overflow, which means the sign bit is correct. The sign bit of the difference is a zero, which means the difference is non-negative. So when the difference of x and y is non-negative, is x less than y? No, it's not, because x has to be greater than or equal to y in order for the difference to be non-negative. So we put a zero here. On the second row, okay, right here, we, we have a scenario where uh, after the binary suppression, the sign bit of the difference is a zero. However, because of the overflow flag, we also know there's an overflow situation. So the way to understand this is when there's an overflow situation, the sign bit is wrong, which means the sign bit should have been a one, which also means the difference should have been negative. If the difference of x minus y is negative, that means x is in fact less than y. So now we have a one over here. And on the third row, the scenario is we know there is no overflow, which means the sign bit of the difference is correct. Okay, it correctly reflects the sign of the actual difference. The actual difference is uh, has a sign bit of one, which means the difference is less than zero, which means x minus y is less than zero. So does that mean x is less than y? Yes. <clears throat> Put the one here. And now the last one is saying that we do end up with an overflow situation because overflow is a one. But whenever we have an overflow, the sign is wrong compared to what it is supposed to be. So because if it is, if after the calculation it is a one, it means it should have been a zero. If the sign bit of the difference is a zero, it means the difference of x minus y is non-negative, which means x is less than y is supposed to be True or false? False. That is correct. Okay. So now we have this truth table. Okay. And if you ignore the first row, the header row here, does this look familiar to you? It should be. Because this is how we compute Q in both cases, in both binary addition and binary subtraction. It is exclusive or. Okay. So that means if I want to assign a label of L to this whole thing, so I'm calling this the L flag, which is either false or true, then the way to calculate this L is going to be sine O plus, which is exclusive or, with O. That's going to be the case. And this is why in the notes I made the conclusion, L equals to what? If and only if the sign interpretation of y is less than the sign interpretation of y. So let me go back to the notes so that you can kind of relate to what I just said. It is, oh, not the wrong, right one. This is the right one. There we go. Go all the way to the end right here. 
if we define L to be sine, which is D of M subscript minus one, is the most significant bit of the difference. Exclusive or with O, which is defined up here, I use a, you know, this is what I call the simplified version, so I don't have to do all the mathematical notations, but it really means the same thing as what we, what I mentioned earlier in uh, Joplin. Then L equals one, if and only if the signed value of X is less than the signed value of Y. So I know we are a little bit over time by five minutes, but this gives us the tool to evaluate two bit patterns in the subtraction and let us know whether X is less than Y. Is that okay? It's a pretty lengthy module. It does have a very strong you know, uh, dependency on all the topics that we have talked about so far. Binary subtraction, base conversion, signed versus unsigned interpretation, and all of those things combined with the reasoning that we just talked about today gave us the tool for signed, this is, the, this is what we use, and then for unsigned, it is even easier because for unsigned interpretation, this is what we use to determine whether X is less than Y. You just look at T of M or the most significant bit of the borrowed, and that will tell us whether X is less than Y unsigned. All right. So today's lab is really just using all of this stuff here. Okay, you know, so you might want to leave the note here open in your browser in case you want to refer back to here. And if you guys want to, I can also give you the notes in Joplin. Does anyone want me to kind of give you, yes. Yes. So I will give you the markdown version because it's no easy way for me to get the PDF out of it of this just one, one note here. So I can give you the markdown. And then once you have the markdown, you can go to any markdown previewer and basically print from that one. All right, so on to the lab. So the lab for today is, I'll give you guys a, like, let me see, today's Monday. Do we have a class after this? Yeah, we do. Okay, so I can't really give you a whole lot of extra time. I can give you a little bit, but not a whole lot. So now we have uh, subtract and compare. That's the module, or this is in lab for today. And the access key is, or the access code is flags. Right here, flag. And if I remember correctly, it is, I think it was already published. So there you have it. I'll give you guys like maybe five more minutes, you know, but I can't give you a whole lot more because there's another class right after this. All right. Let me stop the recorder, upload.